are we seeing the death of robo advisors? So for those of you not familiar, a robo advisor is basically a platform that auto rebalances your portfolio of investments. So one, it diversifies you by choosing a lot of different asset classes combined to give you exposure to stocks, bonds, real estate, you name it. But then it automatically basically amends and adjusts your plan to kind of stay on a specific risk path. We're gonna talk through the pros and cons of this and why we might be seeing the death of robo advisors currently in this video. So to give you a little history lesson into how portfolios are designed around robo advisors. So basically they all use a portfolio concept created in 1952 by a guy named Harry Markowitz. So Harry Markowitz came up with this idea of what's now called modern portfolio theory, which basically the idea is that it's a way of balancing risk by tweaking your investment allocation. It looks something like this, where basically, you know, the more risk you want to take, you have this efficient frontier, the higher your expected returns. So we, you know, we've heard the idea of like, if you're young, invest in more stocks. If you're older, invest in more bonds. Well, the idea that bonds are less risky, stocks are more risky, but higher returns. So you sort of adjust your pendulum here to be, as you invest in more and more stocks, your expected returns goes up, but your risk also goes up. So this is how modern portfolio theory works. And a very basic version of a robo advisor would be say 50% stock, 50% bonds. They may then, you may be, have the ability to say, I want a more risky portfolio, which would be 80% stocks, 20% bonds, et cetera. So you can kind of choose where on this frontier that you want to be. So if you've ever used Betterment, Wealthfront, any of these, you know that you like ask, answer a little risk questionnaire, and then it says, okay, based on that, you're an aggressive investor you're gonna be 80% stock, 20% bonds, right? So they also go through and add in things like small cap stocks, international stocks, all these different things. So here's where the, the death of the potential robo-advisor piece comes in, is one thing that we've started to see through globalization is higher correlations amongst asset classes. So what that means is that not all asset classes perform the exact same way under different conditions, historically, which that was one of the appeals of modern portfolio theory is that you can get that diversification because they're not acting the same at the same time. You know, if one's going up, one's going down, you should have sort of counterbalances there, right? Well, with globalization, let's look at McDonald's, for example. McDonald's gets about 50% of its revenue from abroad, 50% of its revenue from the US. Well, you're not getting much diversification there between international stocks and US stocks if there is a lot of this blending because of globalization. You know, same with uh, things like stocks, and, or sorry, same with like bonds right now. So bonds, for example, because of interest rates being low, so how bonds work is basically as interest rates go lower, bond prices go up. As interest rates go higher, bond prices go down. And the reason for that is, think about it this way, if I can, you know, I borrow money from you for I borrow $100 for you at a 5% return. So I can make $5 a year, right? So my bond has a value for that. So that's a loan, a bond is a loan. So I basically have a, a bond with a 5% interest, right? So then let's say somebody comes out and interest rates went up and now I can go get a $100 loan at, or give a loan at 7% interest. Well, in that's case, my 5% interest is gonna be worth less, right? The 7% interest is gonna be worth, you know, more to me. So I'm gonna go get that 7% interest rate, right? So, because that's the, the new one. So that as like, basically rates go up, my current bonds go down. So all this is to say, right now we're in the stock market situation. What we're seeing is that valuations have been near historic highs in the stock market bond prices have been in a situation where interest rates have been held so low for so long that bond prices have been high as well. Well, now the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, which caused stock or sorry, caused bond prices to basically hit 100 year, basically the worst year in 100 years so far this year, right? And stock prices, we're starting to see a bloodbath in the stock market, whereas like yesterday was one of the worst days we've had in a, you know, quite a while. Um, just, and we're starting to see those valuations really get impacted by just everything going on in the world. So you're seeing a situation where bonds used to be the risk hedge to the stocks, but now they're both going down together. And 
you're seeing that sort of across the board. So what's, what's used to sort of manage this is what's called correlation. So correlations are how different asset classes move together. So for example, this is the correlation matrix. So the essentially the stock market, which is that, you know, called, let's call it the SP 500 is just your mid range stock market. So if we see here, this is a ETF that makes up S&P 500. This is one too. So you compare them, they have a 100% correlation because they're the same thing, right? So then this shows, okay, how, how does the, the main stock market, S&P 500, compare to middle of the road size stocks? Well, they perform the exact same about 92% of the time. They, then small caps, so you know, think tech companies, startups, more aggressive investments, you know, move the same way as the stock market about 87% of the time. And, and this is for this year so far. Um, so same with like, if you like look at emerging markets, we're starting to get some diversification with emerging markets, uh, but still about 80% of the time they're moving the same. Um, or sorry, international is about the same. Emerging markets about 64% of the time. Here you see that treasury bonds are doing what they should do. They're not moving the same way that so the closer you are to one, the, the closer they move together. Whereas the closer you are to negative one, the exact opposite they move. So basically then you have treasury bonds, which have you know very minimal correlation, typically. Real estate, you're back up to 78%. But here's where it gets interesting, is basically if you look at just the past month, bonds used to be, have, you know, negative correlations. So didn't used to correlate in one month time, they already went up to about 40% to a much more consistent correlate correlation, um, which in also you saw now middle caps and small caps and international are moving all together much more closely than they were before. So we've seen this kind of the past couple crashes is during times of stress, all these asset classes start merging together. And so they start moving at the same time. So the traditional idea of diversification and being on that efficient frontier curve that I was showing you, like this basically, you're no longer getting the risk hedge here. So all these things are gonna be starting to make your portfolio much more volatile. And I think this could really impact robo advisors because they're not gonna be doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is risk management. And this has always been a criticism of robo advisors, but it's you're gonna really start because they've gained so much in popularity and this is the first major test since they've gained in popularity, you're gonna start seeing, I think, a bloodbath in those those type of portfolios. And because one, one of the main criticisms is how this whole portfolio works is that it, it uses essentially what's called um, variance, which is not necessarily that's so variance in terms of risk is basically how much the portfolio fluctuates, right? So the problem with that is it doesn't tell you the amplification. So for example, you could have a, you know, very rare, you know, call it once every 12 years or once every 20 years, 90% crash. And that could have the same variance as a portfolio that basically goes down frequently 10%. So it doesn't necessarily show you the downside risk potential. So how far your portfolio could crash during one of these situations. So that, and that to me is the most critical portion of your portfolio is how far down can this go? And we're gonna get into why that is here in a second, but the volatility is measured, but that's the only aspect that's measured. Downside risk is not measured. And to show you kind of why that's super important, losses are exponential. So as you go down more and more and more, it gets harder to dig out of that hole. So if you lose 10%, well, you only need 11% return to get back to break even. Whereas if you lose 50%, you need now double your money to get back to break even. So if you think about it, like I had $100, I lost 50%, now I have $50. Well, I have to gain $50, so I can double my money to get back to break even. Well, the average stock market return, to put this in perspective, is about 10% historically. So if you lose 50%, it's going to take you about five years to get back to break even. Basically, the, the more and more you dig the hole, the harder and harder it is to get out. And to put this in perspective, the NASDAQ 
which is basically tech stocks, so more aggressive stocks, in the tech bubble in 2000 went down about 83%. In a portfolio like the S&P 500 went down about 50% in 2008. So these are realistic numbers that you could see. And if everything's moving together, any of these numbers is not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, so that's where it could get very, very detrimental in a robo-advisor if that's your only way of managing risk. So there's a lot of ways to different manage risk in a portfolio um, by using different strategies such as like tail risk funds or managed futures or alternative investments such as like owning things like direct real estate, owning direct farmland, owning cryptocurrencies, things that have you know different correlations than that that you know the traditional asset classes so when you look for a new investment you really want to understand how that investment moves compared to what you already own if you understand that like they move differently under historical you know impacts then you can start knowing like all right this is how i am truly diversified i'm truly spreading out my investment risk by having assets that actually move at different times but yeah hopefully you found this video valuable if you are on a robo-advisor, you know, yeah, not to try and rag on these, but it is definitely worth understanding how much risk you are taking in that portfolio and understanding if that's something that you can sustain as part of your investment strategies. But hope you found it valuable. Cheers until next time.